Here I'm going to continue to look at organic chemistry, but move on to some of the basics that we really need to know in order to get familiar with learning about those complicated molecules that I talked about in the introduction video. So to do this, I'm going to need to introduce a couple of definitions. They're important. The first one is what's called a homologous series. Okay, and what we know about a homologous series is that it's a family of compounds essentially with the same functional group and the same general formula. I mentioned the functional group briefly in the first video. A functional group is essentially an atom or a group of atoms that are responsible for the chemical properties of that substance. So the way it interacts with other molecules. And essentially we have these families of compounds like this that all have different functional groups and so interact differently with each other. If they interact differently with each other, then they might react differently with each other to make more complicated molecules. And soon enough, if we react simple molecules together, we can build up the complexity and we can make these medicinal drug targets that we're after. And there's one more with the nitrogen. That would be one type. We could have this as another type. We can have this group being another type and so forth. So some of these have carbons and oxygens together. This one has a carbon and a nitrogen together. And these ones over here don't have any oxygens or nitrogens. They just have carbon and hydrogen atoms. In fact, they're just known as the hydrocarbons. So these are the families of compounds that can be used in organic chemistry to create new substances. And some of them we're fairly familiar with. For example, this one in the middle is ethanoic acid or acetic acid. Basically, if we dilute ethanoic acid, we get vinegar. This one is just ethanol. We know that if we dilute ethanol, we just get an alcohol. So it's, this is part of the alcohol series. This one here is known as propanone or acetone. It's used in nail varnish remover and things like that. Okay? So all of these compounds are really important in building up the complexity of bigger molecules that are used as medicinal drugs within our body, but also used in a load of other things. It, so when I talk about the chemistry of life or the chemistry of carbon, it's these functional groups actually that I'm really talking about because these are the things that actually allow substances of different properties. So now I'm introducing the functional group definition. We know that it's an atom or group of atoms, like I've talked about over here, that cause molecules to have similar chemical properties. That's because they react in the same way when forming new bonds. So each homologous series will have a different functional group. So, with regards to homologous series, what we know is that they'll react differently if they're in a different homologous series, but within the homologous series, they react the same way because they've got the same functional group. But the only difference is in a homologous series is that their chain length will increase. What that means is, on going from the first member, which may have one or two carbons, to the second one, which may have two carbons, to the third one, which may have three carbons, there's an increase in chain length. The functional group is the same, like that, but the carbon chain itself is increasing by one carbon as we go down the group. What that means is there is a trend in physical properties, which is things like boiling point and melting point and things like that. If you go back to this video on intermolecular forces, you're going to find more about uh, boiling points and things like that. So now I'm going to talk about how we represent molecules, even though we've looked at a little bit in terms of skeletal formula before. Remember, for more on skeletal formula, see the first video. Okay, the first way of representing molecules, we're going to talk about the molecular formula. That shows us the actual number of atoms of each element present in the compound. So, if the molecular formula is written as C6H14, that tells me there's six carbon atoms and there's 14 hydrogen atoms in the molecule. If it's written as, let's say, C12H24O2, for example, then there's 12 carbons, there's 24 hydrogens and there's two oxygen atoms in that molecule. So that's one way of representing the formula of molecule. It's called the molecular formula. We're used to dealing with molecular formula when we looked at the moles calculations topic. So it's essentially the chemical formula of the molecule. Another formula which is important sometimes in organic chemistry but also in moles calculations is the empirical formula. So the empirical formula shows the simplest whole number ratio of atoms present within the molecule. Essentially, that means you take the molecular formula and then you work out the simplest whole number ratio. So 
if, for example, there was four carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens, then the empirical formula actually is just C2H4O. Now, empirical formulas are used quite a bit for, are used all the time for things like ionic compounds, not as much in organic chemistry, okay? But it's a formula that's worth knowing all the same. So the next formula that we're going to look at are the important ones, really important, because it shows us the arrangement of the atoms within the molecule, and it's called the structural formula. This basically shows the arrangement of atoms within the molecule. It's sometimes known as the condensed structural formula, where you literally just write the atoms as they're arranged. Usually the carbon atoms are all written separately. In this instance, we write COOH. That's because of the particular functional group that we're talking about, which is a carboxylic acid. Don't worry too much about that now. But another structural formula would be, this tells me that there's a carbon with three hydrogens around it, bonded to a carbon with two hydrogens around it, bonded to a carbon with three hydrogens around it. That's called propane. The last formula we're going to look at is the displayed structural formula. It shows all of the covenant bonds in the molecule and the arrangements of the atoms. It's probably the most important one that we're used to, as it clearly represents what the compound looks like. In this case, it doesn't represent any 3D arrangement of the atoms, but it just shows you what exactly is bonded to what. Another example would be propanol or propan one all. Don't worry too much about the fact that I have a tendency to draw the bond like that. That's just to do with the shapes of the molecule around the oxygen. If you look back to shapes of molecule section in the covalent bonding topic. Um, here you can clearly see all of the bonds. If I wanted to represent both of those as skeletal formula, which I have a tendency to do because I find it a little bit easier to, to write and a little bit neater, I would just say, well, propanol would look like this. One carbon, two carbon, three carbon. O, H. So that would be propanol. And then my methyl propanoic acid would be something like that, okay? Where I've got one, two, three, four carbons. One, two, three, four carbons. Okay, so it's really important to get familiar with the types of formula, and especially the displayed formula in organic chemistry.